In this video, we will explain the 2n plus 1 theorem and show you how to derive it. This theorem is useful when you want to calculate the energy of some system using perturbation theory and has also found applications in density functional theory. The starting point is an energy functional, which we want to minimize. It depends on the wave function psi and some parameter lambda. One possible example of such a functional could be the expectation value of the Hamiltonian operator. There, we have the wave function psi in the bra and cat states, and the parameter lambda can appear inside the Hamiltonian. But how this functional really looks like is not important for our discussion. We assume that if lambda is zero, the energy minimum is obtained by the function psi zero. But if we want to consider any lambda, we have to adjust psi zero with some delta psi. And we can calculate this delta psi for a given value of lambda by demanding that the derivative of the energy functional with respect to delta psi is zero. Since the parameter lambda is small, we can expand delta psi as well as the energy in a series, as we usually do in perturbation theory. The 2n plus 1 theorem now states that in order to calculate the 2n plus 1 order term of the energy correction, we only need to know the corrections to the wave function up to order n. A common application of this theorem is that even if you only know the wave function corrections to first order, you can still calculate the energy corrections to third order. Before we can prove the statement, we need to do two small calculations as a preparation. First, we expand the energy functional in a Taylor series by treating delta psi and lambda as two independent variables. Having done so, we use this expression in the defining relation for delta psi, that is, we take the derivative with respect to delta psi and set it to zero. Note that the sum over k now starts at 1 and that we have a k minus 1 factorial here. In order to make it a bit easier to read, we abbreviate all of this with fp. Now, the sum over p from 0 to infinity over fp times lambda to the power of p has to be 0. Since this has to be true for any lambda, fp has to be 0 for all p. This is the first piece of information we need for the proof. Second, we take a closer look at the energy expansion again. It is proportional to delta psi to the power of k and lambda to the power of p. Here we can use our expansion for delta psi. If we consider the energy correction e 2n plus 1, then any term psi g lambda to the power of g can only appear linear in the energy as soon as g is greater than n. To see this, let's assume that the energy depends quadratically on psi g lambda to the power of g. This is proportional to lambda to the power of 2g. And since the smallest value that is larger than n is n plus 1, this is at least proportional to lambda to the power of 2n plus 2. Now, whatever value p takes, it will always be greater than 2n plus 1, and therefore not contribute to e 2n plus 1. Therefore, expansion coefficients psi g only appear linear if g is greater than n. With this in mind, we can now write the product of k copies of delta psi in the following way. First, we have some terms that do not have any psi g in them, only lower orders. This will be some polynomial of order a, where we can start from k and go up to n times k. This is because the lowest possible choice is to take only psi 1, psi 1, psi 1, which results in a factor of lambda to the power of k. And the highest choice is to use only psi n, psi n, psi n, which would lead to lambda to the power of n times k. Next, we have a term that is linear in psi g. What remains are k minus 1 copies of delta psi. So, strictly speaking, in this second term, we have at least one copy of psi g because there could be others in delta psi, but this is good enough for our proof. Lastly, we have all the terms where psi g appears twice or more often, but we are not interested in those, so let's denote them symbolically like this. This expression for delta psi to the power of k is the second and final thing we need for the proof. So here we go. We start with the Taylor expansion of the energy functional, where we now substitute delta psi to the power of k which we discussed in our second preparation step. Remember, we assume g to be greater than n. Next, we only consider the 2n plus 1 energy correction, 
which means that some values of our indices are constrained to yield the correct power of lambda. Furthermore, we can recognize the definition of fp in the second term. This means that all of those terms vanish, since all fp vanish. And since we do not need the higher order terms of the third term, only the first term remains. By looking at the first term more closely, we see that only wave function corrections psi 1, 2, 3 up until n are present, no higher orders. With this, we have successfully proven the 2n plus 1 theorem. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.